All right, welcome back to Radio Maria Ireland. Father Eamon McCarthy with you here, the priest director, and lovely to have the privilege of broadcasting here this wonderful gift and blessing to Ireland of a Catholic radio station. Delighted to have the company of William Chuke again with me today. He's doing the camera work behind the camera, behind the scenes here. And it's my opportunity not just to have the audio element of radio, but a little visual as well, because I have a kind of a pet little aspect of video in, in terms of teaching. Uh, that I can do now on the radio as well as on video that we can uh, share with you. So thanks so much to William for joining me and, and helping me through on this. Now please do get in touch and engage with us. This is an interactive radio station. We're very anxious to have listeners participate. Those numbers, we'll put them on the screen for you as well for those watching on video. But 014-123-456 is our business number. 089-467-2000 if you want to text us there email info at radiomaria.ie and write to us or come see us here St. Anthony's Business Park, Ballymont Road, Dublin 22. Don't forget to like, love, share and all those things with social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter and of course our website radiomaria.ie. So do keep an eye on those and that's a great way of interacting with us. Now I have a, a kind of, as I say, a pet subject, something I used to address when I was in secondary schools uh, and something that I hope will help you understand and see and pause for thought when it comes to the secular media and how they deal with arguments or discussions in relation to life issues and relation to faith issues. Very important, both of these, and pressing in upon us all the time. And just that you might be on the alert and, and mindful of the tricks, if you like. I was chatting about this on a program earlier, how the devil can play tricks with us and deceive us in subtle ways and just twist an argument around with falsehood. and. and so I'm just going to give you something that can break through that and I'm delighted at the visual opportunity to do just that. So when I was visiting schools, uh, the pro-life question would come up constantly. It's an issue that, again, is it's at top of the list in terms of the five or six moral issues that the secular media grab hold of and run with so often. But you'll always hear pro-lifers described, invariably at any rate, in the secular media, described as anti-abortion. You'll never hear the the pro-choice, the other side will be described as pro-choice, they'll never be described as pro-death or anti-life. See the way the argument can twist. The one thing you will never see either in any of these arguments is a visual portrayal of what this is all about, which is why I love bringing it to school and I brought my little model with me here. This little model, perhaps you've seen it before, of a human embryo, it's a model, it's just made of, of clay, but a human embryo perfectly formed at 10 weeks after conception. I used to love passing this model around the classroom uh, and the, the students, the 15, 16 year olds, the older students, would, would kind of look at it and, and I, I, did, I didn't have to say very much after that once they actually saw it. One of the girls I remember leaving Sir class, uh, William will give you a close up of this, this lovely model uh, as I'm speaking, but one of the girls uh, who, who just kind of piped up, you know, was enamored by the idea of the little baby and uh, gave, gave her or him a name. Because uh, I asked him, I said, maybe I could think of a name. And she said, oh, Carol. There, I asked Carol. I said, a great idea, because Carol is both a male and a, a female. You can use K-A-R-L or C-A-R-O-L. But it kind of blows apart all of the arguments in the sense that here now, you have a visual representation of exactly what's at the core of this discussion or debate. It's a human life, perfectly formed hands, feet, eyes, nose, ears, mouth, it's all there. This, this is not a blob of cells, a lump of tissue, it's, it's not a thing, it's not a choice. Let me just hold it up there for you again. That, that is not a choice. That is a human person, a human being with life and with incredible potential and will grow at an enormous rate. You know actually here's a fact for you, a factoid, that if you continue growing after you're born at the rate that you grow in the womb, that by the time you're 10 years of age, you'll be the size of an elephant. You know, the extraordinary science of all of this. You will never see this image. You will never see a picture. You'll never see a portrayal of this in the secular media. They, they want to remove this from your, your vision and your line of sight. Watch out for it. Watch out for it and, and pull the argument back the next time you trip across this uh, to the, the reality. The, take, take it to the science. And with the students, as I say, there was very little more I needed to do than to pass this around the classroom and to show them and kind of maybe ho hold it up to my stomach, by the way. <laughs> I, the, you know, by the way, a man can, can have a baby. They laugh at that too. But 
you know, to, to show that like, this is to scale, this is the reality, that, and it's so beautiful that each one of us was this size at one time. Amazing. Now let me flip the same argument or just transmute or whatever the word is to, to the faith side of things. And again, I'm covering this quite rapidly, but it's the very same principle. In any of these arguments in the secular realm, how little or how seldom you will actually hear uh, the name of Jesus being referred to, still less an even an image of Jesus. So it's the church is this, the church is that, the church is the next thing, hierarchical, patriarchal, institutional, organizational, all these, these buzzwords. But when will they come back to the core of the church founded on the person of Jesus Christ? So here's another pocket-sized argument. This one is a little bit bigger than the pocket size, but another, another approach to, to the question, Jesus on the cross. And it's always good if you have a crucifix to, to kiss the, the crucifix, you know, as we do it on um, Good Friday, Stations of the Cross. But if, if only that image could be portrayed on the television, secular TV, and let's bring Jesus back into the center of the argument. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? Look at his wounds. Look at what he suffered. And I always enjoy that. It won't fit into the camera screen now, but I always enjoy doing that in the primary school. Jesus didn't, didn't just love us this much. He didn't just love us this much, or this much, or this much, or this much, or this much. And it won't fit on the camera screen. Sorry, William. <laughs> he loved us that much. You know, he, he, he loves us this much. Hands wide open with no limits, no limits to God's love. And so the Word made flesh, in the flesh, Jesus entering into our world as a human embryo, the very same as one of us, takes on, infin infinity takes on this, I mean, this incredible mystery of, of life. And Jesus then on the cross offering eternal life. So they're just two visual aids, very simple, very powerful, to just r turn the argument, you know, to uh, kind of break over, open the argument so you can see and, and sense and it just brings, it, it opens it up to, to the truth, really, the light of the truth. This is my, my argument. So I'm so pleased to be able to do it on camera and, and hopefully you can visualize it for yourself on, on radio. Uh, but you can come back to watch this maybe uh, in time to come too. But there it is. So the next time you hear any of these arguments on secular TV or radio or any of these other outlets or the newspapers, it doesn't matter, you know, bring, bring the image to mind. And it, and it just, it changes everything, really. It changes everything. So that's just my little punch for today, if that, if that works, if that helps. I hope it has. Please do interact uh, with, with me on this and help me through. In fact, maybe there's all the nuances to this. But I would love to see some of these people who are debating, either on TV especially, to bring these, you know, I often thought of, kind of, if I was ever asked into a studio, bring them with me in my pocket and say, here you are, look, this is, why, why don't you ask Carol? Ask Carol what she thinks, you know. Okay, let's, let, let's ask Jesus, see what he says. Changes everything. So God bless you. Thank you for joining me here on Radio Maria Ireland. Do stay tuned, do stay in touch. And thanks to the viewers as well who'll be watching this video. Let me finish for you and with you a little prayer. So Lord, we gather in your name. You're here where two or three are gathered. And we thank you for the gift of life. So precious, so fragile, so much in need of our presence to support, nurture, to help mothers and their unborn children. This gift of life is only the beginning because in that gift it opens up to the, the possibility of life-giving love such as Jesus on the cross. And that life-giving love, God, a life-giving lover, a life-loving giver, opens us to, to the reality and the gift of eternal life won for us by Christ on the cross. Help us to embrace this gift and this blessing, to defend always the gift of life, gently with love, but with our own support as well. So Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you for coming among us as one of us to teach us the great sanctity of life. May we uphold it always. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>